Hello, hello, hello. I'm Ed Jones II, the founder of Beyond the Field Player Development. This podcast is here to bring exposure to the player development field. Thank you so much for spending your time here with me. I value the time that you're taking with me. Today, we continue our series called The Head Coach's Guide to Player Development. Now, today's episode, we dip into the scenarios, which I'll talk about a little later. But today is scenario one, creating player development in your program. I spoke in detail about this in season one. I'll drop that episode in the show notes. But once again, today we're talking about creating player development in your program. But before we get started, there are some call to actions for you, some action items you could say for yourself. If you want premium player development content, click the link in the show notes. Right now, I have an episode about the interviews I had with head coaches as I got player development roles and creating a end of the year review. End of the year review is important. I created it to help show the work I was doing in player development to provide for more resources for myself. But then after I did it just for that point, I was like, you know what, let me keep this and let me do this everywhere I go. So there's an episode on that. There's an episode on my interviews. If you want premium content, it's there. Subscribe to this podcast, give a five-star rating and share this podcast with those who you know it will help. All right, we got a player development pod testimonial before we start the show. I want to thank Kelly Thomas at TCU who says this about the player development pod. It's given me more background on the profession and the people who do the work. Kelly, thank you so much for the kind words. It was really cool meeting you in Atlanta. Thank you for filling out the player development survey. And thank you for listening to the podcast. It definitely means a lot. All right, player development conference update. Here we go. Got a major announcement right here. Pew, 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 pew. Major announcement. Next Level Branding is partnering with Beyond the Field for the 2023 Player Development Conference. As a sponsor, Next Level Branding will support the event planning and event management for Beyond the Field's Player Development Conference. I am so excited about this partnership as we provide an incredible experience for our attendees at the conference. Shout out to Evan Norman at Next Level Branding. Hey, we're going to the next level with this one, y'all. Can't wait. All right, let's get started. This series is called The Head Coach's Guide to Player Development. Player development's impact can only go as far as the support of the head coach allows it to go. So head coaches, this series is for you so you can gain an understanding of player development and how it can help your program. There are three scenarios, head coaches, that you will encounter as far as player development is concerned. Scenario number one, you're going to have to create a program. Scenario number two, You got to hire somebody to run the player development program that you created. And then scenario number three, you're going to take over a program where somebody's in place in the player development role. Today, we will talk about scenario one where you create player development. Add time. This podcast is brought to you by Beyond the Field Program, LLC. Beyond the Field is providing an all-inclusive player development service. The service includes staff consulting, program evaluation, and program creation. Please head to btfprogram.com and click on our service tab to find out more. We help you help athletes create generational impact. All right, here we go. We're starting the show. Like I said earlier, it's scenario one. So let me talk about this scenario. So this scenario kind of happens like this. I I saw it in my own career when I went to the University of Kansas. So we had this huge staff meeting where we were talking about all the resources we were putting into the football program. And one of the things that they did was they put up this chart of all the support staffs in the Big 12. So I think, I believe Texas and Oklahoma were at the top with like 60 or 50 people support staff. And then Kansas was at the bottom of like 25. And so what happens is, you know, you get athletic directors and head coaches that want to compete and say, if Texas has 60, I know we probably can't get to 60, but I want to get to 40. I want to, I want to build my support staff. And so you look at these roles that a Texas may have. Okay. And you say, oh, Texas has this. Oh, Texas has a director of player development or this university. Let me not call it a university, but this university has a director of player development. I want a director of player development. So a head coach gets a director of player development because this other university has a director of player development. And it's just that competitive piece like, oh, my support staff is stronger. We're going to be better in recruiting. Well, what happens because of that is you have somebody in a role, you have somebody in your program, but have you defined what player development looks like for you? That happens a lot. I've heard stories from professionals around the country. I experienced it a little bit in my career, but you get in this place where it gets competitive. You created this position, but have you created player development? So I'm here to help you coaches. If you're in that place, if you, maybe you're in that place, maybe your AD came down to your office and said, Hey, we got it. You got to make a player development department. Maybe you said, you know, I saw this here at the school. I visited, they had a director of player development. I want a director of player development, whatever the situation may be. I'm here to help you understand how to create a player development program department. 
Coaches, when you do get to this point, the number one thing you have to make sure is that the values of your player development program are the values that you share in life. The reason why I say this is because it helps you direct this person in a role in the right direction, but it also helps you speak to your staff, coaches, recruits, players, former players. If you love community work, put community work in your player development program. If you love, you know, um, helping out and in hunger, put that in your program. But you want to put the values that you have into this program because you're going to support what you value. In addition to the values and creating a program based off your values, I have a couple questions that you can ask yourself in the process of creating this or in the process of building something for someone else to work on. That foundation of player development in your program, because once again, head coaches, this is your program, but these questions will answer and help build that foundation for someone to uh, excel on. What are the most important skills you want your players to have in life? Coaches, that, that's, I mean, a lot of these questions are self-explanatory, but you know what skills you want your players to have on the field. You know, I want quarterbacks that look like this. I want running backs that look like this. You know, I want offensive linemen that look like this. Maybe you're in another sport listening to this. I want my point guard to look like this. I want my starting pitcher to look like this. There's certain skills. So if we took that same exact um, forecast, and for lack of a better word, what skills would you want for your players off the field? Important skills they need to have in their life. If it's communication, um, if it's financial literacy, whatever it may be but those skills that you want them to have in their life. What experiences do you want your players to have while in your program? I talked about experiences in this episode, the first episode of this series, um, the experiences that players have. And a lot of times they remember the experiences, the experiences they had good or bad in life. You remember, you listen to this, you remember experiences in your life in sports that were good and bad. So you want to take what experiences do I want to provide? You know, yeah, you're going to provide this incredible athletic experience, but what other experiences in their life that they're going to be able to be a part of and say, hey, that was a great experience when I was under that head coach. Outside of wins, outside of wins, what actions of your players would bring you the most pride? So when you're sitting there and I've been in coaches' offices, you got trophies here, rings here, helmets here, pictures of this here. But if you, head coach, if you're sitting in an office, and you're thinking about your players, what outside of what they did on the field or outside of what they did in competition will bring a smile to your face? What would have you say, man, that is awesome. I am, I'm just filled with joy because of what my former player did. Whatever's gonna bring pride to your face. When you sit in your office and it's the off season and you don't have football around, or even if it's during season, you're sitting there and you're thinking and you don't want football on your mind. What's going to make you smile? What text message is going to make you smile from a former player or a parent? Is it graduation? Is it a picture of their family? Is it a, a LinkedIn notification that they've grown in their career? What is it that will bring that swell of pride over you because you knew you had an impact in your athlete's life? I don't know what it is, but you know you have to write that down. Whatever answers you've provided for these questions those are the foundation of the player development program that you can create because you're stepping away from the field, beyond the field. Ha <laughs> I get it. But you're uh, focusing on the development of the player overall as a person. Answering these questions in depth and take your time. I, this episode isn't long. I really want you to sit on these and meditate on these questions because answering these questions in depth will help you understand the impact you want to have in your program. Once you get those questions answered, you move on to the most important question after creating player development, which is who should I hire? I'm going to help you out with that in the next episode as we talk about scenario number two, hiring for player development. Well, that's all for today. I look forward to the next podcast as we build on this episode and talk about hiring and player development. Thank you for tuning in and spending your valuable time with me here. God bless you. Have a great day. Go out and create generational impact. Don't wait, create that generational impact today.